What's going on YouTube? It's Mid40s Gamer here coming at you with some more Elden Ring content. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to get what is arguably one of the best straight swords in the land as soon as you start your playthrough. The Sword of Night and Flame is not only satisfying to swing, but the sword also allows you to cast the Night Comet Sorcery, sending out a beam of light to melt your enemies in place. It also has the ability to send forth a beastly sweeping flame attack that hits so many enemies it would put a Claymore mind to shame. So let's prepare to ride across the land, kicking up sand, tell Melina we ain't got time to bleed, and get after it. Our story begins in Lee Arena of the Lakes, at the point of Lost Grace situated within the Academy Gate town, and as you can see from the map footage, this location can be reached within minutes after unlocking your spirit steed torrent. This area is around 2100 meters past Storm Hill, and is accessed by heading through the woods to the right and utilizing an alternate route around Stormvale Castle so you don't have to go through the boss. From here we'll mount Torrent and head straight to the north through the low-lying water until we come across a stone structure that houses a teleporter, affording us a much needed shortcut right to where we're headed, making this method far less dangerous than telling a woman to go make you another sandwich and be quick about it. As you can see from the map check, the stone structure is a small island with a circle around it, and after entering the blue tunnel of light we'll be transported a good distance away, and when we have boots on the ground we'll grab the map that's staring us right in the face and materialize torrent underneath us before heading north into the King's Realm ruins. It is important to note that instead of heading straight up the gut when tackling the ruins where enemy contact is likely, taking a covered and concealed route on the eastern edge will keep you out of danger. If you take the western edge there is a pack of wolves lying in wait and while that's not really a deal breaker, it's also compounded with invisible casters that'll hit you out of nowhere. Our next step is to slash the wall that's clearly an illusion to open up our path to the next point of grace, which just so happens to be next to a giant master blacksmith. Speaking to this crafting monstrosity will unlock him as a blacksmith in Lee Arena, and just like Master Hugh in the round table hold, he can strengthen armaments. Unfortunately, he's unable to add ashes of war, but he does sell somber smithing stones, which sort of makes up for it. As we hit the ground running north along the road, we'll have to dodge a boatload of crystal rain that's being pumped out by a magical support by fire section on the top of the manor. The crystal rain is easy enough to dodge since there is an audible cue that it's coming in hot. And if you run on angles instead of straight, you aren't likely to get hit unless you have too much Lay's potato grease on your controller. As we dodge the last couple of crystal rain volleys, we'll make it safely to the steps to light the point of grace and head into Karia Manor where the real fun begins. Within this manor, we'll have to tread carefully, since it's chock full of spider hands, which are grotesque creatures comprised of gigantic, disembodied hands grafted together and given life. The mannerisms and movements of these unique enemies mimic that of spiders, and while moving through the soft patches of grass, they lie in wait under the surface, ready to snatch the life out of you faster than gas prices can go up another 30 cents. As you can see from the game footage, you can make out the fingertips slightly protruding from the grass, so try to stay on the rocky edge of the zone wall, which should keep you relatively safe on the way in. It's not exactly clear what the aggro range for these creatures are, but if you happen to get too close and set one off, just prepare to make a mad dash to try to make it to safety. As we run for our life because we're all thumbs, if you're finding any value in this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on any new mid-40s gamer content. And if you aren't too busy wondering why 25% of all the bones in your body are found in your feet, leave us a comment in the comment section and let us know how we're doing. As we barely escape that purple ranged attack by a frog's hair, we'll enter into the side door of the manor, clean up the one drop of pee that came out, and continue on by heading up the stairs to light up a rather convenient point of grace, giving us our first foothold within this veritable fortress. After taking a tactical pause at the grace point, since we enjoy having full health, We'll head out to some rather thin ramparts and prepare to dodge yet another type of enemy this zone has to offer. After running down this linear path for a bit, we'll end up triggering a few spiritual enemies that we didn't plan on fighting anyway at level 9, and we'll exhaust our stamina bar by sprinting the whole way. After turning the corner and dodging some more incoming projectiles, we'll use our limited parkour skills to hop off this runaway train about three quarters of the way down, landing on a rather large rooftop without taking an ounce of damage. As we hop off this rooftop onto a smaller one below, all that's left to do in order to get our greedy loot mittens on this game-changing sword is slide to the bottom of the ladder and head over to the chest in the back left corner that houses this legendary armament. 
It is important to note that this weapon can't be infused with Ashes of War, enchanted with magic, or boosted by consumables. However, there are some workarounds such as self buffs and talismans that still do have some effect on damage output. Well folks, it looks like we're coming to the end of another Elden Ring video as we prepare to shake things up with our shiny overpowered toy with multiple options. We would like to take this time to personally thank you for watching, and if you're new to the channel, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on any new mid-40s gamer content. And if you aren't too busy wondering why balsamic vinegar doesn't contain any actual balsam, leave us a comment in the comment section and let us know how we're doing. So until next time, just remember, Kool-Aid was invented in 1927 in Hastings, Nebraska, National Garlic Day is April 19th, and as always, good hunting.